There are many things we don't give a second thought to until they stop working. Take drains and sewers, for example. They're not much of an issue until our streets, or worse, our basement floods. As part of our Water Matters coverage, Jim Kircher explores a complex system that is undergoing a big and expensive transformation. Forest Park is a good place to start a discussion of rivers and sewers. A lot of money has been spent to create these natural looking water features. But there's a lot more here than meets the eye. To find the real remnants of the real river that once flowed through Forest Park, the River de Pere, you have to have the Metropolitan Sewer District unlock the entrance to a stairway that leads down to an amazing work of engineering that in one era was a solution, but today is something of a problem. Dry weather, all the water goes to the treatment plant. MSD's PR guy Lance Lacombe has had a lot of requests for tours these days. This is clean water we're looking at here. In the tunnel next to this, we'll look at in a moment, is where the sewage is. Right. And so these twin tunnels run down, go to two very large sewers that run underneath the River to Pear, and then goes to a treatment plant. So the city started building sewers in the 1850s after the big cholera epidemic, and those sewers went straight into the river. As the city grew, the amount of sewage grew, and the sewers grew. It's important to note that two of the city's biggest sewers began as natural waterways, Mill Creek and the River De Pere. They were already carrying plenty of sewage when they were taken underground or turned into concrete channels. And there was an era when a city's status was proudly measured in smokestacks and sewers. And get this, in 1916, St. Louis celebrated the completion of the Mill Creek Sewer Project with a formal dinner for 200 inside the giant sewer before it went into use. Guests were lowered down into the tunnel where they found tables and chairs and a kitchen. There was everything from caviar to after-dinner cigars. If there was a golden age of sewers, this was it. The River de Pere had been put underground years before in Forest Park as part of the preparations for the World's Fair. Years later, there was a big flood and a major bond issue was passed, putting an army of laborers to work digging and building bigger tunnels. These are the ones that are still in service today. But even when they went online, we were still just flushing all of this stuff directly into the Mississippi River. The idea that it should be treated first, that came later. Well, in 1969, when this country put a man on the moon, only 5% of the wastewater from St. Louis is going to a treatment plant. So treatment plants are And the rest going into the river. Yeah. So treatment plants are relatively a new phenomenon, if you would. But this is how it was designed. This is how it's the function. It was state of the art at the time. But it is not state of the art anymore, and here's why. While most of the time, the mixture of storm water and sewage and what's called a combined system does all go to the treatment plant, where it's cleaned up before it goes into the river. It doesn't work that way during big rainstorms. Big downpours send more water than the sewer pipes can handle. So where does it go? Well, that's the next stop on our tour. We took a drive right down the middle of what we know as the River de Pair, that concrete channel on the city's southern border. On most days, like this one, it doesn't look or act much like a river. But right below this channel, there are sewers. And when they get full, instead of backing up into basements, they spill out into the River de Pere. This is one of the overflow points here, um, where if we get too much rainwater coming into the system, um, the water will come out of here and spill into the River de Pere and go down the Mississippi River. And this sewage in here? Then? We are standing in a sewer. This is heading to the treatment plant, goes through there, and it will look Further down from here will intersect that very large sewer I spoke about running underneath the River to Pear. Carrying a heavy rainstorm, this chamber we're standing in right now could easily be full of water. Yeah. And it needs some place to go because there's not enough capacity in the system. So it would go out through the, these outfalls here into the River to Pear. So explain to This me system may be good for protecting homeowners' basements, but it is bad for the environment. And the EPA and the Coalition for the Environment sued the Metropolitan Sewer District, saying it was in violation of the Clean Water Act. MSD settled and agreed to spend nearly $5 billion over 23 years. Yeah, well, in this particular watershed in which we're standing, we're going to be building large storage tunnels. Uh, the longest of those will be nine miles long. 
uh, 200 feet below ground and almost 30 feet in diameter. So they're going to be massive, massive projects. This was a tunnel MSD dug 15 years ago. The new tunnels will be about the same size. These projects are really expensive, and homeowners and businesses will see sewer bills go up. Four billion dollars, whatever. 4.7 yeah. billion, five billion, call it, over 23 years. Does it solve the problem? No, because you're, you're always going to have a storm that can come along and overwhelm the system. The sewer system, especially in built-up areas, gets filled up a lot faster these days because of buildings, streets, and parking lots, all of those rooftops and paved areas. Water doesn't seep, it rushes into the sewers. The new tunnels will take in a lot more water and reduce the sewage overflow down the line. But what if we could slow things down here? Well, as part of the settlement, MSD will also spend millions of dollars on something called green infrastructure. The Metropolitan Sewer District, of course, by definition, is in the business of building and maintaining sewers. It is also, these days, in the business of gardening. This is an experimental rain garden in Old North St. Louis at the corner of 14th and Clinton. When we first visited, the plants weren't up yet, but you could see how this is supposed to work. The drains in the street don't go into the sewers, they go directly into the garden and its basin. But we wanted to see this in action. And a few weeks later, there was an April downpour. It turned this alley into a fast-moving river heading right towards a storm drain and into the sewers. And all over the area, things were filling up fast. The rain had let up, but the rain garden you could see was still doing its job. It had captured the torrents in pools, which were gently emptying through the rocks and into the basin. MSD will be measuring just how effectively this rain garden reduces the flow into the local sewer. And if it works on a small scale, the idea is to make it work with a lot of rain gardens on a big scale. So if you build the, the stuff you need to build, mm -hmm. the tunnels that will handle that overflow, store it, and then mm -hmm. push it into the system yep. gradually, right? And you combine that with reducing flow, does that solve the problem? It, it, it gets us to where we need to be. That's our plan. Um, but remember, this is a 20-year project, and they're not going to be blowing things up and starting over. They'll be working to improve the system we have. So that means the tours under Forest Park will probably continue. And let's give credit where credit is due. This system is a National Historic Civil Engineering Landmark, right up there with Union Station and the Eads Bridge.